going in the snow because this is how our life is in May to visit North Sales. You see the logo? Uh, I can't tell because I can't see anything. I see a blue where. <laughs> Neither of us could see anything because we're both blind. Can you see? <laughs> yeah, like here. Like here. Okay. Right. All together. taking the um, Kingsbury grade up over the ridge, we didn't know that North Sales was literally in our backyard. In our backyard. <laughs> and so we decided to take a visit there earlier in the year and check things out and see how they actually made the 3D eye sales. And uh, it was amazing. So this time we're going and we've selected our sales. We're going with North Sales. Uh, but we're going because we're bringing our cameras and want to give everybody a view of how they actually get built. So that's what we're doing today. Hey, do you want to tell the story how we um, went about selecting our sales? Because we were actually done and selected with a different sale company. Yeah. So why I don't thought, you I thought we were done and tell the story? Because it was such a process, uh, everybody has a different opinion of what sale plan you should have for your boat, and there is no right or wrong, and, uh, but you are like asking yourself so many questions. And I had talked to two sale manufacturers, and, and I, we were pretty much done and decided to go with one for upwind sales and another one with downwind sales because they had a great reputation. And last August, we came back home. Um, and then I don't really remember how we found out the North Sales loft was right in our backyard. But I think I was driving somewhere and I saw the building and I was like, what? Is that a North Sales building? And then I looked it up on the internet. Yeah, and then so, you, so you, then you tell me like, oh, let's go uh, visit the sale loft from North Sales. And I'm like, oh, this is the last thing I want to do because I don't I know, want to start. I because you're already done. Yeah, I'm thinking like I'm done and I don't want to start another conversation around, you know, cell plan and materials and whatever. And so initially I said no and then you went on a business trip and then I'm chatting with Neil or Buddy Neil who's ordering an Ultramare 55. He's out of Melbourne, Australia. We had met him in like on mud. And it was late at night and he's like texting me and said, okay, I... Right. placed my order with North Sales and I'm like, oh, let me check the website. So I'm checking the website and then I'm like, okay, I sent an email and then I said, oh, we, we are like really neighbors. We'd love to visit the factory. We're getting a new Tomeo 52. And then they say, oh, come on over. And So then we took a, a tour of the factory and we're completely blown away. Yeah. And then we left and we're like, oh, that was an expensive road trip. Um, because we decided to change our minds, go with North Sail, um, pay the extra money, and yeah, I think we're really going to be happy with our sale choice that we yeah, made. Yeah, and start the process again. And, and yeah. So here we are. Here we are. Do you want to talk a little bit about um, the sales we did pick? Yeah, so, well, one big decision was to go with uh, self taking jib and a code zero or getting a Genoa with a, a stay sale. So that was, that's one major decision you have to make when you pick an Outremer or maybe like a performance oriented boat catamaran. So in our case, we ended up deciding to go with more of the performance side of it with the stay sale and the Genoa. So we're getting a stay sale and Genoa uh, we're getting a code 65, we're getting an A2, 
Um, so the A2 will be like a big, uh, big spinnaker, asymmetrical uh, for kind of downwind sailing and light air. And obviously we're getting uh, the main. <laughs> right. So those are the sails we have ordered and we reserve the right uh, to change our mind about the symmetrical spinnaker, which I've been against the whole time. But um, as it is with sailing, you you change your mind a lot. Yeah. So to pace, depending on who you talk to, we'll sail this summer, and then we'll make a decision yeah. if we get a symmetrical spinnaker uh, that might be useful in some conditions, or if we want to uh, preserve or nice sail for some conditions. Cool. Okay, so we're here at North Sales, and we're going to check out what goes on in there from the threads to the tapes to the sail building to the molding um, all the way to the very end. So it'll be a really interesting thing to check out. Also, we're not sponsored in any way by North Sales. We're just doing this because it's fun. Yeah, we just, you know, we, we learn as we go and we love to share with other people and that's all that's the goal yep hey there he is how are you how are you are you yeah it's cold up there yeah how are you all doing we're doing good yeah yeah you brought our camera this time so if you guys remember and you listen to our podcast tom is our neighbor yep and he took us through a little bit about how cool it was to work at north sales yeah so super cool. cool And break, break stuff. stuff. Yeah, y'all can have a look at that. <laughs> yeah. That's what he does all day. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's being paid for that. And I'm trying to get things, keep things from breaking. So how long has this loft been in Nevada? So Nevada was probably 91, ah. 91, 92, yeah. where we you know, erected building one. Since then, it's been expanded two or three, two times. Then we rolled into producing 3D eye cells. We needed more space because a totally different way of, of manufacturing. So then this building we're standing in right now, building two, uh, it's probably eight years now, yeah. I think. Yeah. 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 Pear has over four decades experience as a sailmaker for the largest lofts in the world. So he was the perfect person to give us a tour. All right, so what's going on here? So this is the you know the be beginning of the 3DI process, and it's you know by now it's you know widely known that what we do we take uh, materials are Dyneema carbon aramid polyester, we take the bundles of material to toes and we spread it into filaments, and it's a uh, you know certain sequences we go through, going through the nip rollers etc. and that's kind of the secret sauce of of producing the tape. So. All the, all the fibers are sitting on these creels and then going down the production line. So depending on what kind of sail you get made, there's the different combination of uh, materials. Now that, that's what we are talking about in the car that blew us, that blew our mind last time, that we start with just fibers like these and then when we'll be done with the tour, we'll see a whole finished sail. And that's really cool. I think to, to realize it starts from like almost nothing, just filaments. So now we're on the other side of the Prager line. So the uh, you know, completed tapes are coming out. So this is a master roll with uh, you know combination of, of fibers that are now in filaments. Eventually, when this is done, this run is done, we're going to take it up the master roll, the mother roll, slit it up in, in uh, narrow rolls and go to the tape head where we do the, the specific layouts. And again, the layouts are specifically geared towards what your sales are going to be. Norris Sales produces 25,000 sales a year and builds some of the largest sales in the world. So now we're checking out the machines that actually roll the tapes down. So now we're taking the, you know, the complete tapes and, and uh, you know, all the different types of tapes from, it can be high carbon content, the high Dyneema content, etc. We have polyester for external layers, for typical cruising products, so your sales will have a 
tap the layer on the outside for UV and shape resistance. Everything is laid down on these tables to specific, specifically engineered layouts that are catering again, catering to your use. So once these panels uh, are done and laid out, we bring them down to uh, building one where we have the mold. So three-dimensional adjustable molds. So not only do we custom make the tapes, custom make the layouts for the specific usage, we also have the adjustable molds are adjusted to the specific 3D shape that's needed for your specific use for your bus. You would probably end up with, I would say, about 12, 12 layers. Oh, wow. But in the corners, you know, where you have the build-up, mm -hmm. you may end up with 50 layers. So in the clue, head and attack, mm -hmm. you can have up to 50 layers. We've done layouts with up to 500 layers just to see how, how many layers you can actually consolidate properly. Uh, but that is that is outside what what we do. We just you know you want to push a limit and see where where it is. Yeah, and that's one thing we found out when we did the tour last August. When you mentioned about the ocean uh, version, yeah, it's more adapted to people like us, yeah. the cruisers, uh, for durability, for protection, it's safe, and and so initially we didn't know about it. But that's one thing that we really liked about you know, ourselves to have something that is still performance oriented. Yeah. but adds characteristics that are helpful to cruisers to add to longevity. Right. With other sail making methods, mm -hmm. you may go from a race sail to a cru cruise sail, yeah. and the only addition is to put a taffeta on the outside, everything on the inside is the same, so it's not a full adaption to your specific use. Mm -hmm. So we have, we have so many options with the systems that we use. That's pretty there cool. are a lot of black sails in here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, in this department, what we do once the order again, once the order comes in, and the design is done, the layout is done, we process everything to go out, have the tapes made. Meanwhile, we have a ticket checker that's going over the uh, the worksheet base that the designer has, has uh, created. Then we have the parts department, so the team here that create all the parts that's going to go into the cell. So it's been pre-selected by the designer, then it's been checked by an additional person, and that worksheet goes out to this team. They produce all the you know soft parts and all the hardware has been ordered, or we may have it on the shelves. It goes in the bin and it follows then the molded sail into the production site. So the the finishing team, they have everything they need sitting right there in the bin. So it's easy to pick and there won't be any mistakes. No one can make their own decision on, no, I think that ring is too big or too small. It's already been predetermined. So that the team here are doing that. We have a laser cutter where we just cut the parts and put them together. Tom will, uh, Tom will fill you in what, what he does here in the, in the oh, lab. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited. So this is a lab. It's a little bit of a mess, but any lab that's being used should be a mess. Um, but yeah, basically here we uh, test fatigue, uh, new adhesives, uh, our fiber material. We do qualification testing, R&D testing on new layups, our, all sorts of things. So. Um, I guess basically, um, so this is actually for different colors, so uh, you guys might get this. We're working on better blacks right here, and so we're kind of experimenting with matting agents. Um, but yeah, so we lay up test panels. We'll get some uh, just raw material of the tapes that you saw, and we'll lay them up into this, and then we utilize our um, lamination bench over here which you'll kind of see over in building one, kind of a little mock of that over in building one, but basically we'll vacuum bag the panels there. We'll utilize our heat lamp here to consolidate them and that will cure the product. 
uh, we utilize these machines over here. So these are our fatigue and fold machines. And uh, it'll basically fatigue the sample. Okay. And this one will fold it here. So this will do a uh, preset number of folds on the material and then we will take it up and we will take it over to our tensile tester and this is where we actually cut it or uh, break it. Oh, that's, um, that's Hottie's favorite machine. Yeah, so this is this is the fun <laughs> stuff. Uh, right now it's set up to do peel testing. So our peel testing is uh, to test our adhesive bond strength. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the less fun stuff. It's very slow mm -hmm. and monotonous. But um, the fun stuff is is the actual tensile testing, and that's where we, we make one-inch strips and we snap them. <laughs> I remember when we were talking to uh, North Sales and to different people and be like, so how long will the sales last? And the answer is always, well, the first criteria it depends on the owner, yeah. the use yeah. of the sales, because with some people it will last you know, a very short period of time, and some people will last a very long time. Mm -hmm. So it's all about how, you, how much you take care of yourself. And, you know, Either Tom or I would come down to Bora Bora <laughs> anytime. Oh, back oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's on tape. It's, it's, it's recorded. <laughs> yeah. We might bring our families. Down. Right. <laughs> That's fine. We have the space. That's awesome. Yeah. Cool. So what's next? So uh, we can go down to building one. Okay. And look at the molding and finishing procedures. Okay. So we're heading over to the other building, and in this building is where they put the sails on the molds and then cure them after the fact. And as Pear was saying, they match them up and um, put them together. Yeah, basically roll these different panels that we've seen over there, bring them to this building one, and then there is some kind of assembly process. So it's, uh, it's one single sail, sail at the end, one from multiple panels it becomes one big panel with no seams or anything so that's pretty pretty cool we saw the, the filament at the very beginning and now we'll see the finished product at the end cool let's do it now we're in building one so this building, building was one. erected about early 90s, 91, and you see the first wall down there, and that was the whole building, so we had a smaller finishing floor, a couple of molds back here, and then when uh, that, that was in the 3DL days, we had laminated with film and fibers, where we laid everything directly on the mold. When that started to happen, then North South decided to expand further, so we have two more expansions in this building. With Currently we have one, two, three, four, five molds in here. So with the 3DI uh, way of producing, we actually minimize the amount of molds because the cells take less time on the mold. So we re removed, after we had one, two, three, four, we have removed four molds and one of the current molds we hardly use anymore. We only keep it more for a backup in case we have a, a you know, same facility in Sri Lanka if because of certain political unrest, etc. If anything happens there, it's good to have a backup here so we can keep, keep producing. So, the step that we take after we bring the panels down from the other building is, first of all, we take the design and um, process it take the actual 3D design from the design program, transfer it into the mold program. So the mold will be lifted into the custom shape that's been, been designed by the cell designer. Once that's done, we grid the mold. So we run a grid to make sure that the, the shape is properly done because we have approximately on this mold, it's 280 lifters. So if one of those lifters is a little bit out of sync, we have to double check that, so we run a grid over it. Once that's done, we lay down a bottom film, which is a vacuum bag, and then we drape the panel. So this is probably a ocean cell that you see here, which is fairly high dynema content. It's got the tap on the on the exterior for UV and shape. Um, 
we drape the panels and here you can see what we call the scarf and that's oh. where we make sure that there's no build up there's not like traditional 2d cell making you take flat panels put them together with a lap joiner which is prone to sliding and breaking mm -hmm. and also you know a full-on 2d will have 3d so flat and then through steps up to create that 3d shape now we're doing it as one you know um, molded 3d shape so they're laying down the first panel here and then the next one panel after panel is going to go on once that's done we can go up to the other molds and see we may have something that's being consolidated under the heat lamp right now Yeah, so there's the heat lamp over there. Yeah, they'll, they'll turn and come down this way in a little bit. So we start the lamp from the from the head of the cell and moving down. Uh, and we have to we run at the specific temperature, about 100 C, to do the consolidation and start the cross-linking. And you have limits in terms of what you can do temperature-wise because certain materials that we use have a melting point and also there's a so there's an upper limit and a lower limit the lower limit is where you know the the, the consolidation won't start or the cross-linking won't start or accelerate the upper point is where materials will start to to for example Donima melts at about 156 something degrees celsius mm. Here, here you can actually see the construction of that what we call the scarf, the step down, full on step down construction. What we do just for QC, we put those are little thermometers that will, you know, record the maximum heat goes over it. So we can do a QC, make sure that our plugged in numbers are, you know, matching what actually comes out. So we can do a QC right away. And we can also go in and look at the results after the cell has been pre-programmed, but then we can go in and look at the temperatures that were uh, actually done over certain parts of the cell. So these are the hydraulics under here, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So these are all the all the lifters, and then there is is a mesh of metal that are sitting in, in you know joiners in between and then we have uh your batten structure in two directions and then the foam on top and then uh, another material layer and i assume all this is uh, basically computer like oh, yeah. you get the file with the shape of the cell you plug that in and download all the file press the button and, and it shapes yeah so wow. in here you see two shapes that are down in the neutral position and oh yeah so they're you know completely flat then you, it takes right. about five minutes to completely get into shape and then we'll take another 15 to 20 minutes to do the grid part of it and then you can manually change if you see that a lifter is is high then you can manually change that to get into the to the it, it's mm -hmm. perfect position So this cell here is now completely done, consolidated. We're basically waiting. I, I would. It looks like it's consolidated. Yes, it's been done. That's for. Uh, that's again. That's actually the head for the Dijkstra that you saw down there. So this cell has been done. Is waiting to come off vacuum and we peel the film off. After this is done, the cell have to go to. Um, post curing and we don't touch the cell in terms of either shipping to a finishing facility or start the finishing until it's been cured for another 11 days yeah so this is the other section so if you add those two sections together it's a pretty big cell yeah yeah and then yeah what struck me last time when we went through the process is it's just the the boat building process you know with a mold with the vacuum bag, with yes. where there is no injection, it's already injected. Uh, yeah. But it's very similar in yeah. concept. Yeah. With there, there's a 3D we, mold, yeah. there's a film, 
there is the great. vacuum bag. It's, yeah, flex it's flexible 3D molded yeah. uh, piece of, of material. So it's, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a cool process. It is, yeah. Pear explain they have a special team who's dedicated to just creating the 3D shapes for the film bags the sails are sealed in for heating. The films have to be identical to the sails for a perfect shape. 3D shape oh. that we use for the, for the bags. In this tiny town in Nevada, nowhere close to the ocean, they start with spools of fiber and end up with finished sails. So, so on the floor here, you see actually these are code cells. These are pieces for the code cells because the code cells are, you know, a combination of depth and size that they we can't really fit them on one mold because we can't inflate the mold big, uh, large enough. So you may end up with a cell that's built out of two pieces, three pieces, or five pieces. But if you compare that to a conventional crosscut cell, you would have. If we do a five-piece cell, it would probably be, you know, maybe 30 horizontal panels on a conventional uh, old-school production that would be 3D. So we, on the downwind cells, we combine, you know, the 3D molding with joining them. It's more old-school cell making, but it's still, everything is 3D. The only thing is we have, you know, it built in a few sections. We did in stages. Yeah. yeah. So everything here is now... We have some cells that are being joined together because they're too big for the molds and other cells are just sitting in curing. So there'll be 11 days before we either bring them to the finishing floor or we fold them up and ship them to the UK or New Zealand or France for finishing over. Sewing machines to make it easier, we have a rotating pit so the machine would rotate around the cell instead of dragging the cell around the, the head of the machine. And that's kind of in-house innovation. One of our managers, floor managers, quite a few years back came up with the idea and then we put it to engineering. They, they yeah. engineered and build, build the pit. It's quite, quite a machine. And then you see this belt here on the floor. That machine moves the whole length of the floor. So instead of having 12 people hanging on to cell and dragging it through the machine, we just lay the sail out and one operator can, can you know, put the love tape, leech tape with a machine that's walking up and down the, the floor. Very yeah. cool. North Sales does suggest you have your sails serviced every year. Like everything else on your boat, sails need to be maintained too. With 3DI sails, it's sometimes hard to see if there are issues, so having them inspected is a good idea. Next, Pear gave us a peek at what our sales look like in the modeling software and explained how they ensure exactly the performance we're looking for. Very well adapted to 3D molding. Mm -hmm. So this is a good way to see the smoothness vertically and horizontally. Okay. How excited are you about your sales? Well, I mean, one well, very, because I think they are really, really badass. <laughs> but I think also it's, you know, you, you see a finished product and you don't like realize the work, the, the technology, like kind of that, that is behind it. But now I think when we're going to look at ourselves, cool. we won't, we will be looking at ourselves like kind of like the same way because it's just you know you, you, we've seen pretty up close like how everything is made and how everything is designed. So that's going to be like pretty awesome to be able to look at this and 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 have appreciation for right. you know what the, how the sale was made and. So cool. Yeah. Well, I'm glad I could accommodate you guys. Too. Yes. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much yeah. for you know, the hosting. The game plan us. was to come for you to come and see your sales being built, but because of you know scheduling etc., it's a little That's difficult. Okay. But you guys are. But I hope you got the, you, know, you got a good good idea on what's, yeah. what's going on. Thank you for your time so well, much. I, I really appreciate it. It's yeah. always good to have both clients and you know other people here to see what we do because it's you know once you a lot of, of clients coming in. They say, "Oh, no, I get it." Yeah, because it's hard to just, yeah, you know, in a sales presentation, look at pictures or videos. It's hard to understand really what's going on until. Well, we were down a completely different path. Yeah, and then we came here and we were like, "Okay, yeah. now we understand." So. Yeah.
see the logo? Uh, I can't tell because I can't see anything. See. I see a blue where? <laughs> Neither of us can see anything because we're both blind. Can you see? <laughs> yeah, like here. Like here. Okay. Right. So we want to just give a heartfelt thank you to Pear and to Tom for hosting us on sh such short notice and um, letting us see the inside scoop of what's going on. Yeah, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. And thank you to the whole North sales team. Fair wins for now. Bye-bye.